We are back and better than ever. We're working through our food goals as we sample 20 bites at the Venetian Resort. Modern Global Steakhouse. Wood Oven Artisan Pizza. French Bistro Classic. Home style Italian favorites. Four world class restaurants, 20 bites of delicious dishes, 20 sound bites from the people tasting them. This is 20 bites with the Fung Brothers. What's going on everybody? David and Andrew here from the Fung Brothers and we are back here at the Venetian Resort in Las Vegas for another episode of 20 Bites. Last time we ate so much good food, but there is still so much more to try. They really have a world of dining options here. 20, 20 Bites, bites. Let's, let's go. All right, so we have just arrived to cut by Wolfgang Puck. This is a global modern steakhouse with a constantly evolving menu. Basically, they're putting a contemporary twist on a classic concept. Let's check it out. Starting off, we have General So's quail. Quail? Not chicken, quail. Chinese people do traditionally eat quail, so it's like a hybrid. Let's go for it. Perfect bite, shaved scallion, fresh chilies. That's an aesthetic bite. Notable. Notable. Wow. This is taking me back to New York City where I believe General So's was invented. Cilantro, chili, scallions. Woo, that's got a nice spicy kick. Anybody who's a fan of General So's chicken needs to check out Cut's General So's quail. Next up, we've got the Korean steak tartare. This is the chef's take on the traditional Korean dish, yu kuei. Korean pears, you got sesame seeds, you have a quail egg cracked right in the middle. This rice cracker with the onion powder. You can't find this at a lot of steakhouses in America. No, a lot of steakhouses are there just to cook steak, but here, they're serving it raw. David, I don't know, man, I'm feeling some raw emotions. A little bit of dip on your chip. Korean steak ta ta. That meat was succulent. That is high grade beef. I gotta, I gotta go in for, again for the chip. Oh man, this was amazing. Such an airy, crispy rice chip. It just kind of dissolves in your mouth once you eat it. It's ridiculous. Now we got the whole Thai fried snapper deboned side of jasmine rice with the toasted garlic chili soy. I didn't expect to see this here in Las Vegas with the head on. This fish had a pretty good dentist. They dressed this snapper to the nines. Could you say, Andrew, that this snapper is dapper? Woo! My favorite bites from this dish had all the elements, and the snapper was just bringing it all together. David, if you had to be a fish, which fish would you be? Probably pick a shark. Mm. The apex predator. This is real. Japanese Kobe beef from Japan. This is it. Look at this. Unbelievable. Here we go. Wow. This was melting at room temperature. It was phenomenally buttery. This is not steak. This is perfection. Now finishing off the meal, we have banana cream pie. This is actually banana ice cream inside of a dark chocolate dome. Ooh. Yo. I like that. that looks like a movie. Almost uh, sci-fi like. Just visually, this is out of this world. Stunning. It's so funny because it's such a beautiful masterpiece and then they just say, just dig it. Oh. Oh. Oh, David Fung, destroyer of worlds. That made bananas taste better. That was the perfect exclamation point on the meal. I'm going bananas over this banana cream dome. We have now arrived to the newest addition to the Venetian, Six and Mill Ristorante Pizzeria and Bar. They are specializing in authentic Southern Italian recipes. They've done a great job of recreating a special neighborhood vibe, and guess what? They've got some amazing artisan pizzas we gotta check out. Starting off, we have the arancini, which is essentially a fried risotto ball. Here, it's actually a fried risotto cone. Oh, it's shaped differently. Let's give it a shot, man. This is actually probably what the original pizza bite was based off of. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh! Yo, you popped the top on Patrick. <laughs> it almost looks like a pasta dish all in one bite. Mm. That's crispy on the outside, delectable in the middle. It's almost like a pizza bite, but 
the best pizza bite you have ever had. So traditionally this dish is actually made into a ball, but I like how they made it into a cone, kind of like a pear shape because it's actually easier to eat the aerodynamics of it. We've got two different pizzas. Woo. You've got a Copia, AKA the meat lover's pizza. I've got a Vince. This is a Bianca, AKA a white sauce pizza. I, I feel like we got to do rock, paper, scissors, and then that person gets to pick. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ow! I picked that one, the Copia. Here's what I'm seeing on the Vince. Crushed pistachio, a little bit of orange zest, fresh mozzarella, you have some sausage here. When I heard that this pizza was neither American nor Italian, but a fusion between authentic and the American style, I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna like this. Cheers. Salud. The crust is tender. David, do you usually finish the crust? No, but today I will. I did not expect that to like that. <laughs> Perfecto. This is a cheese and pepper pasta. Cacio e pepe. Cacio e pepe. David, you gotta get this. Oh my gosh. Yo, yo, you know what is dope about this? This is perfectly, look at that. It is Ooh. perfectly cooked Southern Italian Naples style, guys. Italy has five different provinces, five different distinct styles of food. Here in the Venetian, they're gonna have three. Sixth and Mill is designed to take you to Naples. That is so cheesy. David, I can't tell if I'm chewing on the noodles or it's almost like noodles of cheese. Such a simple dish, executed perfectly. That pasta this has just enough bounce, has enough chew, cheese, and that little peppery kick. My word to describe this would be unexpected. I got it, I got it. Designer. Ooh, I like that. Next up, we've got Aqua Paza, AKA Crazy Water. Well, it means crazy water. But it's actually sea bass. It's actually sea bass. It's a Branzino. What we're looking at here is a wild Mediterranean sea bass. It's got a little bit of a crispy skin. This amazing tomato sauce. Wow. Um, hold on. The spicy tomato broth really has a nice zip to it. Ah, uh, zip. Dave, you got any crazy water stories? One time at the aquarium, a beluga came and spit salt water in my face for like 30 seconds. And it was weird because people were kind of jealous, but they were also kind of glad. I got an interaction in with the beluga, but then it was like, I was covered in salt water. You know what, it, you got a story, but it came at a cost. Beluga chosen one. When you come to Six and Mill, ask Chef Angelo about the story behind calling this crazy water. It was a hell of a story. We have arrived at dessert. In Italy, they say they eat desserts for two reasons, guilt or fashion. So it's either gonna look really good or just feel really good or both. We got the Zeppolini de San Giuseppe. Sounded good. I like how these uh, snacks are bite-sized and Chef Angelo was telling us that they wanted to make it easy for you guys. So you just pick it up and eat it. No fork or knife needed. Little cherry on top. Let's see what's in the middle. Wow, that is deadly sweet. Here's the Obaba. Basically, this is like a rum-soaked cake with supremed oranges. You got the lemon cream on the inside. Oh my, good. my God. That's rich. All right, David, going back to the Italian philosophy about dessert, that one might be for fashion. This one's for guilt. My favorite Italian dessert I've ever had in my life. We have arrived at Bouchon Bistro, which features the quintessential bistro classics by Chef Thomas Keller. We're eating their famous brunch. Let's go. Woo. Starting off, we got the escargot a la bouillon, AKA snails and butter. There's a little hat on it. But it's almost like the shell got replaced by a puff pastry. Escargot. Have I had snails so delicate, so decadent? No, I haven't. I think all snails should come with a pastry hat like they do here at Bouchon. That was buttery and excellent. And you have to say it like that. You can't just be like, that tastes like butter. I think I could eat a dozen of these on my own, man. These are good snails. In fact, these are great snails. No snail fails here. It's a grail snail. If I had to rename this dish, I would call it snails in a blanket. Oh, I got it, I got it. Butter of the sea. This brunch superstar is the croque madame. Different from a croque monsieur. Mm. Cause it has the egg on top. Believe me, I care about the croque madame. 
crook madame. The crook madame. But I care about the fries. 10 out of 10 on the fries. Those fries are impeccable. You know what I love about this sandwich? This is your classic ham and cheese sandwich, and on top you got a fried egg with Mornay sauce. The croque madame is my favorite way to eat a grilled cheese sandwich in the entire world, bar none. Wow. If we were to rename the croque madame. Mm, what would you rename it? So more Americans would eat it, I would call it a French drip breakfast sandwich. Oh, I would call it the French open. As they would say in France, these fries are fit. Fire. Here we are with one of their premier dishes, the poulet et de gaufres. AKA roast chicken and waffles. Normally people are used to seeing fried chicken and waffles. This is their own unique take on chicken and waffles here at Bouchon. So here you had your savory sauce, you had your sweet sauce. So you'll get sweet and savory in one bite. Dude, this waffle is super light and crispy. Yo, this is my first roasted chicken and waffles. There is such a palate pleasing inside to that waffle. Wow. The sweet, the savory, the crispy. That was perfect. This dish proves that any chicken goes well with waffles. Are you gonna drink the syrup again? Okay, we're at a French spot. I think I gotta watch my name, all right? So. This onion French soup is called soup à l'oignon. I think it's French onion soup. French onion soup, soup à l'oignon. That word soup must have came from France. Yeah. It's the same word. Is that a big piece of onion? No, that was bread, bro. Oh, there's bread, onion, and cheese on top. This is not a dish that you're supposed to eat very clean. That's why they give you this plate underneath. It's overflowing. You can eat it when it's pretty, but I think it's gonna taste the best when it's rugged. Oh my gosh. You gotta eat that. This is French onion soup. It gives you options. You went for the cheesy McGee bite. Mmm. That was a lot of cheese. <laughs> That's a lot of onions. Man, these onions are bringing me tears of joy. We're ending off brunch here at Bouchon Bistro with assortment de patisserie. Some pastries. I can already visually analyze the power levels of these pastries. What's got the highest power level? This is a cream cheese. But you just look at the layers. I can just tell they're back there. Just all right, you know what? I gotta go for this uh, chocolate one right here. Super crispy. Binoculars. Oh my gosh. This is the only good time to be flaky. Mm. Wow. Wow. I have to rave about that raisin one. Bouchon Bistro. <laughs> We just landed here at Buddy V's. They're serving up Italian-American classics by none other than the cake boss himself, Buddy Velastro. These recipes have been handed down from grandmothers to aunties to moms, and let me tell you this, just being here, I'm already feeling the vibe. Let's head inside. Our very first dish here at Buddy V's has arrived. It is the charred octopus. The chef told us it is one of his favorites. We'll see how tender it is. It's cutting straight through. I like how octopus is becoming a little bit more of like a mainstream dish. Wow. That is so good. It's cooked perfectly, it's tender, it's got a little bit of sweet and a little bit of heat. The best way to describe that, it's brothy. If you can cut some meat with your fork, that's when you know it's soft. Oh! Clean. The fork became the knife. Wow. The, two, the different sauces that he had pair it perfectly, you have choices. I choose both. David, you know what I'm doing? You know what I'm doing? It's gotta be some sort of octopus move. <laughs> okay, now we have the hot honey on white. We pizza. are looking at honey drizzled pizza. Spicy honey drizzled pizza. It's inspired by drizzling honey on cheese, which is a traditional Italian thing. Mm -hmm. They took that concept and applied it to cheese pizza. The chef did tell us that this will change the way we look at pizza for the rest of our lives. Let's see. Okay. You get the sweet and the savory at the same time. When you said it was gonna change the way that I thought of pizza, definitely. I now know in my head that putting delicious spicy honey on pizza does work. I am actually really, really excited for this next dish. I am as well Dude. because this is Sunday gravy. 
David, I've never had pasta like this. There's lamb neck, there's pork shoulder, there's spicy Italian sausage in there. I don't know if we can do this in one bite, bro. I've never had it like this. I'm so excited. Yeah, you know what it reminds me of? You know when you're in Jersey or Brooklyn, everybody's like at the Italian spots and like, yeah. stay a go. Stay a go. You mean this is one of those spots that you stay at? Stay. I gotta go for the- uh, I looked at the sausage right like, oh. I'm going with the lamb, because I've never had lamb pasta before. That is truly Sunday's best. Oh my gosh. David, if I had to rename this dish, I would call it daily gravy because I would want to eat this Monday through Sunday to Monday to Tuesday through Sunday again. This is where it's at. You know what I love about Italian restaurants is that it's so centered around being a family. You know, it's made to share, the portions are big, everybody scoop out their peas. And never go against the family. <laughs> Our next dish, is their famous veal, the ossobuco. Look, you got a uh, piece of bone marrow in the middle, very trendy, trendy wow. before it was trendy. Let's get it. Oh, there you go. This is the ossobuco. And then you have this focaccia bread right here. Is it focaccia or focaccia? Focaccia. Reveal that veal. Yo, yo, I gotta keep it veal. This is so good. Veal for vendetta. I thought that this was gonna be covered in sauce, but really they let the veal shine on its own. This was impeccably homemade. This was impeccably mastered. Ending off on dessert here at Buddy B's, we've got the lobster tail. It's a flaky, long pastry that's in the shape of a lobster tail, but it's filled with a Bailey's custard. Lobster tail. All right, I'm gonna split it. Wow. Sounded like cracking open a lobster. I'm actually gonna fit in a couple of blueberries and raspberries up in there. But it's not lobster tail, it's actually pastry. So you're kind of saying it like Sean Connery. Lobster tail. Oh, this is definitely a guilty pleasure dessert. But it could have been for fashion too. Yeah, I could see somebody wearing this. Hey Tony, you enjoying your lobster tail over there? Cheers.